Hi everybody, and welcome back to Five Day of Jesus. This is part three. And we need to go and find Ham. Would you have a second you could spare? Oh! So you're still here then? Welcome. Have you seen my friend Hans? He's not in great shape. I've got to find him. The little man? Yes, I've seen him. He's kind. He told me about mammoths and faraway places. So you have seen Hans? What is Where is he? He went to a circus place. He said, I'm just going to drop in on an old friend. All right, thanks. I'm going to see what I can find further on. As you like. How's it going? Father, Hans doesn't want to stay in the attic anymore. What happened? It's not his fault. How's it going? Father. Kate Walker, what does all this mean? I don't know, Oscar. Hans has had a kind of fit, a kind of delirium. His health isn't exactly 100% right now. Why, that's simply awful, Kate Walker. We must do something. Things cannot go on like this. Please, calm down. I'll see what I can do. Okay, Kate Walker, but do hurry. Oh yeah, this is the bathroom. Colonel, please, can you help me? What can I do for you, Miss? Would you have something to treat a fever? My friend is sick. Oh, sorry. I sold my last pills last week. Is there a doctor around here, or a pharmacy or something? Around these parts, that would surprise me. But they say the monks up there can patch a man up. At least people around here go up there sometimes. Thanks for all your help. The pleasure is all mine, Miss Walker. All right, so he said about monks. So the monks might be the next step of of our adventure. Malka? Yes, Kate? My friend Hans is very sick. He needs taken care of. Oh, otherwise he's going to die, isn't he? Like Mama. I don't know. He wants to get to the end of his journey so badly. Sometimes that is not enough. Since he was really young, Hans has dreamed of a land called Siberia. Siberia doesn't exist. It's just a story they tell kids to make them sleep. And I'm no kid anymore. I believe the story, though, Malka. So, you're going to have to help your friend, Kate. Tell me, 
Do you know anyone who could help heal my friend Hans? Yukos has special tonics in his bar. No, I need a real doctor. Then you'll have to go to the monastery. I suppose there are monks at the monastery. That's right. Monks with big black robes. Very creepy. There's nothing to be afraid of. As monks, they must be good men. And you tell me they can treat Hans? The patriarch is a stern old man. He won't treat your friend if you don't follow the monastery rules. How do you know that, Malka? He wouldn't look after Mama straight away. Because of the rules. That's what she said. I'm sorry, Mama. Thank you for your... Come back and see. Howdy, Mr. Sirkar. Good day to you, Miss Walker. How's our friend Hans Sporlberg coming along? Uh, not great news. Ah, uh, well, if I can be of service, whatever you require, don't hesitate to shout. Mr. Sirkar, I'm worried about Hans's health. Dang, it's all my fault. Never should have asked him to do me that favor. What do you mean, favor? No major work or anything, just to get my wind-up Broncos back in again. Oh, don't blame yourself. Hans was already ill before he came to see you. You've got nothing to do with it. Mr. Sirkos, if you wouldn't know someone who could treat Hans Varlberg, would you? Oh, not many pill pushers around here. Guess there's always the monks. The monks, you say? People around here say the patriarch of the monastery has the healing powers. And they also say he's a dingering, a bit of a fanatic, if you know what I mean. Well, whatever. I have no choice. Tell me, Mr. Sirkos, it was you who took in that little girl Malka into your care, wasn't it? I just couldn't bear to be with a little girl like that. What happened to her mother? Oh, a gypsy woman fleeing God knows what monkey business. She got here half dead and crazed with fever. The monks helped her, isn't that right? Uh, you could say that. When they stopped being high and mighty, they took her up to their monastery for treatment. But it was far too late for the poor girl. Them old crows make up their own rules. They'd leave a man to rot rather than get their habits dirty. I don't like them one bit, Miss Walker. What rules are you talking about? It's a phony old custom. To decide whether a dying man is actually dying at all, the patriarch of the monastery looks at the patient's face before deciding yay or nay. But how? I don't understand. We kind of make this print of the face on a piece of cloth, you know, like the shroud of Jesus in the Bible. I must confess I don't really understand this shroud story. You see, just outside the village, the monks have put this kind of iron box. A box containing a pile of linen sheets. When you put one of these sheets over the face of the sick man, it has the curious property of soaking up all the sweat and juices. So effective it is that all the features of its face can be seen on the cloth. And so the old patriarch looks to this print to form his diagnosis? At least what he can judge is whether that face on the shroud is sick enough to get dragged up those rocks to the monastery and be treated by him. I suppose anybody can take a cloth from the crate and eat it? You suppose wrong, Miss Walker. One person has charge of the distribution of the said shrouds, and that's Malka. She sure is proud of her position. The patriarch himself gave her the responsibility, and that kid ain't giving it up for no man, believe me. Mr. Sirkos, could you please introduce me to the patriarch of the monastery? Mm. Want my opinion? Best stay right away. Oh, why is that? 
Have you ever heard the showman and a priest sing a duet together? They think my cabaret is a den of debauchery, and that I'm a funky old miscreant luring lambs from the altar. Luckily, Mr. Sercos, we're not in the 19th century anymore. But we're not too far here, Miss Walker. Believe me, best I don't put my finger in that pie. It's really cold around here. I can't go to the monastery dressed like this. Dead right, Miss Walker. Best to be careful in these temperatures. You wouldn't have something warm to lend me, would you, Mr. Sercos? Um... <laughs> but not going to be easy, what with you having mighty different vitamins uh, statistics and all that. Oh, yeah, maybe you're right. Please excuse me. I'm going to try to find some clothes someplace. Do the monks have a telephone? Uh, they don't even have electricity. You'll have to go up there in person, Miss Walker, then try to... How do you get up to the monk? When you go up of here, sir. Thanks a lot. I've got to go now. Go quick. Mighty kind, Mr. Sir. Mr. Sirkoff? What? There's maybe some warm clothes in your music? A few years ago, I had the pleasure of employing a mighty pretty singer who shared your dimensions, Miss Walker. I'm afraid the costume she wore that night might not lend much protection from me. Yeah. I've got to go now. Go quick. Mighty kind. Mr. Sirkos? What can I... If you luck out and find some clothes, could you be sure to... Why, certainly, Miss... I've got to go now. Go quick. Mighty kind. Mr. Sirkos? What can... Where could I find some warm clothes, Mr. Sirkos? The general store, my dear. Oh. I've got to go now. Go quickly, Miss Walker. And mighty kind, Mr. Just... Right. So now basically I need to go to the school. Before I do that Tell me. How is it going? He told me why they couldn't treat her at the monastery. Yes, please. Sometimes people get too sick and there's nothing that can be done. Your friend too sick? Hope he isn't. I'm going to help you, Kate. Can you help me, Malka? Only if your friend is a little bit sick. Not too much, or you'll be sad. We'll see. Let's give it a try, you know? Like for your mother, with the monks. On the road to the monastery, there's a kind of box with sheep. The monks call them shrouds. I'm going to give you a token so you can get one. It's very important, Kate Walker. And then what do I do with the shroud? Take it and lay it over your friend. Okay. <laughs> okay, I got a Thank token. Come back That's what I need. I need to get here. Uh. I will show you with it where to get it. Right, now I got one of those, so I need to go back to the train.
Let's go to the train first. Right, now we need to go to the general store. Colonel, please, can you help me? What can I do? Our route is still long, and my friend is suffering. I don't know what to do. Siberia is hellish cold at this time of year, Miss Walker. And journeys take an age. Your friend isn't in the prime of youth anymore. I was told the Patriarch of the Monastery can diagnose illness if he's shown a cotton sheet marked with the feverish face of the patient. What do you think about that, Colonel? <laughs> Here in Mother Russia, Katyushka, there are stranger things to be told. I want to go up to the monastery, but it's so cold outside. Would you have some warm clothes to loan me? Maybe so. I might find what you want up in the attic. I'll get the ladder out. I'll pay you for what I use, of course. Don't you worry, Katyushka. You're a true ray of sunshine in this dusty old shop. And we don't see sunshine here every day. You will find something that will fit you in the attic, I'm sure. There you go, miss. I can't climb up there anymore. Colonel, please. What can I do? From what I've heard, Colonel, the patriarch of the monastery is some kind of healer. I'm just an old Cossack, and to me there's only one real remedy for everything. A good shot. And that would finish off poor hands for sure. Thanks for all your help. The pleasure is all. Now, where to find some place appropriate to step into it? Alright guys, this is all, all, all the time we have for this episode. If you guys have enjoyed this episode, please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.